Hello again, welcome. Thank you for clicking through to this video where I explain how the venturi of the carburettor actually creates combustion within the engine. It basically does so in a nutshell by adjusting the gasoline fuel to allow it to combust in the engine and without the venturi you'll see that it would be very difficult to do so. This particular video is basically a shortened version that I've done recently so that we can get to the point a little bit quicker on this particular topic. And as always, this is how this system works to the best of my knowledge and beliefs over the years I've worked on these particular engines and carburettors and the research I've done. And so we'll get started now with two images that I've drawn, one four stroke, one two stroke, and I'll explain the two. And in order to do that, I'm going to zoom in a little closer here of the actual induction tube on the four stroke. But what I'm about to show you is principally the same for both carburettors. And let's imagine now that we're just starting the engine. So the pistons are lowering on the induction stroke so we're just pulling in some air now and so as this air passes the top of the jet there and creates a vacuum inside the induction tube there it draws out that fuel but the fuel doesn't come out as liquid like this and it's a very good thing indeed that it doesn't because if it did in this liquid form it would go into the engine and it wouldn't actually combust inside the engine so the engine wouldn't actually run what the carburetor has to do is break down this liquid into small particles where the air can mix with it and emulsify it and I'll show you how it does that. But in a nutshell it does this using high velocity air. Now of course the air naturally coming into the induction tube is at a high velocity but it needs to be up regulated there in order to draw out that fuel and emulsify it. And importantly, if we notice the air here, we can see it's starting to cluster more densely there. And that's because it's coming up against the resistance here, a smaller gap here caused by the venturi. Because we've got a smaller gap, we've got that air building up there and most of it can't get through this gap quick enough. And so it starts to slow down there. But the piston wants to keep drawing that through all of that air and because there isn't enough of a gap there for that free movement of air to enter through the carb, a huge vacuum builds up on this side of the resistance here. And of course, because there's a huge vacuum here, what air does actually come through that resistance there in the Venturi is moving at an incredibly high velocity. And so at the moment, we've got two main things going on here, as I've said. We've got this high velocity air traveling past the top of the jet. And we've also got that high amount of vacuum there, which will pull fuel out of the jet. And so I'll just backtrack slightly. There we go. What actually happens now then, as that air rushes past the top of the jet and the vacuum pulls the fuel out of the jet, what's actually happening is that that air starts to hit this fuel as soon as it starts to appear out of the top of the jet. So as soon as it does that, it starts to break that fuel down into smaller particles, which is what we call atomizing. So it's atomized the fuel at this point. And remember, it's all thanks to that high velocity air created by the Venturi, which hits that fuel so hard to allow this to occur. And so that's how the fuel is atomized. It's atomized because it's broken down into smaller particles and it's also emulsified now because it's mixed with the air. You can see there the air has managed to get around all those particles. It's now emulsified the fuel. And now, thanks to the workings of the carburetor, the fuel is now in a state where it can be combusted by the engine. And I'll just explain in basic terms how and why this fuel is important. It's in this state when it gets into the engine itself. Before I go on, just to clarify, this is the top of the piston here and that moves up and down. This here is the sides of the barrel, of course, and we can see the fins there that keep the barrel cool because I've just identified it as a single cylinder air cooled engine. And we've got the spark plug there. And of course, here we've got the area here where the piston travels up and down in the cylinder. There wouldn't actually be this much of a gap. It's only an illustration here I've made. And so let's now imagine that we're going to try and get this engine running. If we look at the fuel there, if it came into the engine, like this in liquid form, it would just lie on top of the piston this way. So let's imagine it's came into this engine now and it's just lying there in liquid form. And so above it there would be the air because these two components haven't been mixed. 
So we've got the air above there and we've got the liquid form of the petrol line beneath it. Now I've illustrated the air as existing in dots like this when in reality it would be more like this because air of course is everywhere it doesn't exist in dots. So if we imagine now they're the two components we've got inside the cylinder and the piston is rising so it's going to try and combust when it gets to the top and the spark plug fires to try and combust that fuel. Now when I say the spark plug fires the electrical signal to the spark plug to fire occurs but at this stage if the spark plug does fire at all then it's not going to be able to set fire to that fuel because that fuel is in liquid form it actually drenches the spark plug and as I've said if the spark plug fires at all then it'll be a very weak spark and none of that heat will be able to travel round the fuel in order for it to combust because it's in liquid form and so let's now start again with the scenario that the fuel was emulsified and atomized. So what we've got now is the fuel in there that's mixed with the air. You could see there that it's in tiny particles and the air is mixed all around it. So we've got air all around in between all of these particles, keeping them apart. And now when the piston rises and gets to the compression point and the spark plug fires, something different occurs, of course. What we can do now is see that when the spark plug fires, that heat can travel right round and get to each particle a lot better because there's space between them. And so that's my take on how the Venturi creates combustion within the internal combustion engine. OK, I hope that pretty much explains it and I hope you've gained something from this video. And if you think you know somebody who may benefit from this video, please do share so that it can reach them as well. And also, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching.